Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Wednesday, the 4th of May, and uh, we're reading evening prayer, Easter season, from the Church of England's Common Worship. If you're wanting to follow the words, they're available at the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as Apple or Android apps. And if you're following in the book, you'll need to turn up the morning and evening prayer during the seasons section and uh, flick through till you find the Easter evening prayer bit. It's also the Lesser Festival of English Saints and Martyrs of the Reformation Era. If you are following in the book, halfway through you'll find Saints Day options, 4th of May. Look that up and then hopefully you'll be able to find where we're going. Electronically, if you're following uh, automatically, it's all provided for you. We're going out on Facebook, Zoom and YouTube. More anon once the bells have rung. So the code for the Zoom meeting on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on the Facebook page and uh, I upload the audio, which I'm recording, onto my Dominic Global YouTube channel in about an hour's time. You're also very welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6 every day. I'm not in on Mondays, but uh, Ginny, the team vicar, might be taking on that uh, those slots. And on Sunday, I do traditional communion at 8 in the morning and said even song with hymns. In the evening, though, this Sunday, we are going to be at Walpole uh, instead of here. Uh, choral even song with our team choir. You're very welcome to attend each or any of these events, however you are able. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The full put of Chartres hymn the following. Ye choirs of New Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ, the paschal victory to him in strains of holy joy. How Judah's lion burst his chains and crushed the serpent's head, and brought with him from death's domains the long-imprisoned dead. Triumphant in his glory now his scepter ruleth all, earth, heaven, and hell before him bow, and at his footstool fall. While joyful thus his praise we sing, his mercy we implore, in his palace bright to bring and keep us evermore. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son, all glory, Holy Ghost, to thee, while endless ages run. Alleluia. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The Psalms may be found at the back of the book, if that's where you're following. We have numbers 67 and 72 appointed this evening. 67 has a couple of repeated verses within it, verses 3 and 5, so additional refrains have not been added by the compilers. But 72 has, so we'll open and close 72 with the refrain, but uh, 67 will jump right in. I'll read them both 
in their entirety. You're welcome to listen to them all, read them all, or read the even-numbered verses as if we were doing it antiphonally. We say the glory be after the last verse, and we'll pause so that we may read the prayers that follow each psalm and use them as we see fit. Psalms 67 and 72. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God our own God will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Give the King your judgment, O God, and your righteousness to the Son of a King. Then shall he judge your people righteously, and your poor with justice. May the mountains bring forth peace, and the little hills a righteousness for the people. May he defend the poor among the people, deliver the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. May he come down like rain upon the mown grass, like the showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish, and abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. May his dominion extend from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes kneel before him, and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings shall fall before him, fall down before him, all nations shall do him service, for he shall deliver the poor that cry out, the needy and those who have no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. Long may he live unto him, may be given gold from Sheba, may prayer be made for him continually, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, standing thick upon the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain grow like the grass of the field. May his name remain forever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all nations be blessed in him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wonderful things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. May all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. A great prayer for righteous rule, and uh, includes the hope that those in charge will care for those who would otherwise be excluded. And so we had our Amen. To the canticle, a song of faith, turning back, if you're following in the book, to evening prayer during Easter season. Scrolling on, if you are following online, past the first reading, to which we'll return in a moment. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain, Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord and the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. <coughs> into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You are ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, <clears throat> like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Opening my Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints, this is a reading from Their Lord and Ours by Mark Santa. 
of the Elizabethan and Stuart martyrs, Edmund Campion is probably the best known outside the Catholic community, but in the community at large, the names of the earlier martyrs, John Fisher and Thomas More, are much better known, as are the Protestant martyrs, Cranmer, Latimer and Ridley. The difference is significant. Fisher and More died in the reign of Henry VIII. They were central figures in a Christian commonwealth, which was not yet fragmented. They are remembered as public figures who belong to all England. Fisher, among other things, as Chancellor and great benefactor of the University of Cambridge, and more as Lord Chancellor of England. Forty-five years later, when Campion returned to England as a Jesuit ministry, missionary, rather, he did so as a man who had deliberately rejected the Church of England to serve the cause of a persecuted minority. That is the community which has continued to remember him. To put the point differently, Anglicans do not naturally think of Fisher and More as Roman Catholics. They do think of Campion, if they think about him at all, as a Roman Catholic. He figures in the history of the Anglican community only as an outsider. Most informed Anglicans are scarcely aware of the Roman Catholic martyrs who died in England between 1570 and 1680, yet any Anglican who comes into close contact with English Catholicism will soon discover the vital importance to that community of the tradition of the martyrs. He will find a community which keeps the memory of those martyrs alive by liturgical observance and for whom it is natural to ascribe the cause of their deaths to the Church of England. There is a connection between our self-identification as members of particular communities and the stories we tell about the past. It is by the things we remember and the way we remember them and by the things we fail to remember that we identify ourselves as belonging to this or that group. What we remember or do not remember moulds our reactions and our behaviour towards others at a deep level deeper than that of conscious reflection. In itself, it is quite natural and proper that the various groups and societies we belong to should be characterised by particular myths and stories. Sin comes in when difference is turned into division, and when our different stories, with their distinctive emphases, distortions and omissions, are put to use for the maintenance of grievance, for the self-justification, and for keeping other people in the wrong. Sin boards on blasphemy when Christians justify their fear-loathing persecution of each other in the name of Christ, of whom we read in the Gospel that he died to gather into one, the scattered children of God. No theological agreements between churches will be sufficient for the restoration of communion unless they form part of a much profounder social reconciliation in which we can learn no longer to see each other as strangers, but rather to trust one another as friends. This means, among other things, that we must learn to tell new stories about ourselves and about one another. In other words, we need to re-educate our memories. We need to look at the past afresh. We must find out how far our prejudices conform to the facts and what the same events look like to those who are heirs to another story. We must find out why we remember some things and others, rem and others remember other things. Only in this way can we set, get free of our fantasies. As we do this, we learn to see that those who suffered and died, though deeply estranged from each other in this life, died for the one faith. Though their differences ran so deep that they felt constrained to die for them, all indeed for the one Christ whom all tried to serve and follow. That indeed is what makes a martyr. A martyr calls us to the limit imitation of Christ. The martyrs transcend our causes, our partial perceptions of the truth. They belong to us all because they witness the Christ who is Lord of us all. Interesting observations worthy of consideration to Deuteronomy 6, our first Bible reading. Deuteronomy, the last of the books of the law. So right at the beginning of the Hebrew Scriptures, you have the Torah, the five books, Genesis, Exodus, so on. Deuteronomy is the fifth of those. And we're looking for the large number at the head of the paragraph, the chapter number 6, Deuteronomy 6. If you are following online, you'll remember we scrolled past it a little earlier. So it's just before the canticle we read a moment ago. Now this is the commandment, the statutes, and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life, and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down, when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, to give you a land with fine large cities that you did not build, houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hewn cisterns that you did not hew, 
of vineyards and olive groves that you do not plant. When you have eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The Lord your God you shall fear, him you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. Do not follow other gods, any of the gods of the peoples who are all around you, because the Lord your God who is present with you is a jealous God. The anger of the Lord your God would be kindled against you, and he would destroy you from the face of the earth. <clears throat> do not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Massa. You must diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his decrees and his statutes that he has commanded you. Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may go in and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you, thrusting out all your enemies from before you, as the Lord has promised. When your children ask you in time to come what is the meaning of the decrees, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord our God has commanded you, then you shall say to your children, we, are, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. The Lord displayed before our eyes great and awesome signs and wonders against Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his household. He brought us out from there in order to bring us in, to give us the land that he promised on oath to our ancestors. Then the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our lasting good, so as to keep us alive, as is now the case. If we diligently observe this entire commandment before the Lord our God, he has commanded us, we will be in the right. So here we are back in Deuteronomy, and uh, I leave it to you to decide whether you think this these are actually the words of Moses, remembered then written down when people started to write, or whether they were written at the time of the exile and put into Moses' mouth. There are lines like, um, these instructions were given so as to keep us alive, as is now the case, suggest that it might have been written later. When you, your children ask you in time to come what is the meaning of these statutes, then you will say such and such. Hear, O Israel, observe them that it may go well with you. When your God has brought you into the land, he swore to you. So this is set as if Moses is telling God's people to do what they're told. And as they do, God will be with them. And uh, God will be evidently with them in that he will um, ethnically cleanse the land that they're going into. And take over property they didn't build. Um, management of olive groves and vineyards they didn't plant. And uh, cisterns for water that they didn't dig. And so it's kind of fraught with difficulty, I would suggest this, particularly if we're taking it literally. And uh, these thoughts, these instructions lie behind secular Israel's occupation of Palestine as they see the scriptures as suggesting to them that they should occupy this land. that God has given them it's their right, um, divine right under God. However, I would suggest that anybody who is claiming land as part of their faith needs to recognise that their faith instructs them to be kindly towards strangers and foreigners, to be just in terms of land law. And so the English going into America, what we call America now, the English going into um, Southern Africa, South Africa as it's now known, with the Dutch and that land grab and that claim that there are people that were there, whose land they were looking after were, were there, alongside the land to be used in uh, the name of God. And these people going into that land saw themselves as being like the Jews going into the promised land and claiming for themselves. So I would suggest we need to be careful whether we are taking geographical land or whether we are taking areas of thought and philosophies into our control, that uh, we are careful and we recognise that Actually, it's not a God-given right to do what we want, but that actually God is with us as we do what is right. So as we care for those people of the land, as we care for the land, as we care for the lost and the broken, the refugee, the stranger, the war-torn, then God's rule will be established and God will be present. And therefore our lives will be made the easier, we'll live longer, and others will be encouraged and blessed by our endeavours to live right before God thinking back to that second psalm we read earlier about just rule. To Ephesians 2 from 1 to 10, our second reading. Ephesians is in that uh, section of the second covenant or Greek scripture after the Gospels and uh, Luke's second gospel, Acts. 
Romans and Hebrews, and then the larger letters to the Corinthians, 1, 2 and 3. We've got uh, Ephesians, which is the second that group written to named smaller congregations in places. Galatians, Ephesians, A-E-I-O-U, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians. So we're looking for Ephesians, chapter 2, large number 2, at the head of the paragraph. Small numbers in the text, 1 to 10 other verses. And if you're following online, we scroll on past the canticle we read earlier to find it. Ephesians 2 from verse 1. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and the senses. We were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he has loved us, even when we were dead through our trespass, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in the kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Interesting that Paul, if it is Paul who's written this, um, talks about what people did before they came to faith as being um, disobedience and uh, making people children of wrath because of what they do. But then he turns to saying that actually we're God's people because of what God has done for us. And uh, once we become God's people, the things that we do demonstrate that, thinking back to our earlier reading. Um, about God's people being told to obey, and as they do what God tells them to do, then God will be with them. It's kind of almost the other way around, and that was what I was think, trying to explain, that uh, as we behold God, as we explore our faith, as we learn, as we live, as we feel we're instructed to, as the Spirit enables and teaches us in Revelation through Scripture, tradition and reason, then God will be with us as we act but it is because God has chosen us that we can then act in that way. It's not the other way around. Our works testify, I guess, to God's grace. We are what we have been made, created in Jesus, for those good works that have been prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So let us commit and commend ourselves to that way of life, that God's rule may be expressed to the responsory back in evening prayer during Easter season. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. The Song of Mary. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and followed in the way Rejoice with God now and forever. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and followed in the way will rejoice with God now and forever. Hallelujah. Sorry, those following the book, I should have said, if you looked up today's date, you'd have found direction at Common of Martyrs or uh, wherever that refrain came from. Make her lover keeper, one in three, three in one. At the end of the day, we come to you and we thank you for all that has been good about it. Those moments where we have felt fulfilled, where we have known your presence in us, where we have been enabled to do those things which we know we should have done. 
where others have been grateful, where we've made progress in relationship and conversation, where we've viewed our skills and talents to your glory, and we we feel that that has been recognised, where we've felt empowered, enabled, loved, protected, a sense of belonging, all those positive experiences of being human, we thank you for them. But we also come to you at the end of the day recognising that we might have had um, less positive experiences of ourselves, of you, of our neighbours, our colleagues, our community today. We might have felt excluded, put down. We might know we've done wrong. We might have experienced pain and hurt, poverty. We may have turned away, made our own minds up done things our way and not yours. We may have deliberately put people down, we might have been frustrated and cross. And so we come to you at the end of the day praying for your healing, your provision, your deliverance, your protection, your presence, if I've not said that already. So to release International's prayer feed on my prayer mate app here, we pray for the family in Kenya of Mwangi Minor, one of the six Christians killed in Lamu. Extremists forced his four children to view their father's dead body before setting fire to their house. May God be merciful and may the authorities in that place establish um, security that people of all their ethnicities and faiths may live together in peace. We pray for justice and peace in Afghanistan with Christian aid. The Joint Public Issues Team prayer for Ukraine. It reads, God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. We mourn every casualty of this conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. We pray comfort for those who grieve and those who are fearful. Here our longing that leaders and nations will honour the worth of all people by having the courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. May all our human failings be transformed by your wonderful grace and goodness. We ask this in the name of Christ, the author of peace and sustainer of creation. Suffolk Diocese Cycle of Prayer today has us pray for... Um, St Mary La Tower in Ipswich and their clergy, Tom. Pray for all others who support him, PTO, House for Duty, um, clergy, readers, elders. Pray for the lay leadership in terms of their church wardens, treasurers, secretaries, other officers at the PCC, PC members, electoral role, congregations and community. We pray that all may be encouraged by the idea of calling to service and righteous leadership and the empowering and the fruitfulness that that brings as we live as you would have us live. Grant them the victory and uh, the extension of your rule in terms of that land, the philosophy, the ground that they are claiming in your name, that people may be free. We pray for local government generally across our county and beyond, giving thanks for all who give up their time and effort to promote the aims and needs of their constituents as they uphold their party's view the way that is best achieved alongside their um, faith, commitment and integrity. We also pray for Frederick, who is pastor in Bukizu Parish in Biharumulo uh, Diocese. We pray that he too may be encouraged as he recognises your support for him and your promise of provision. Turn to our places in our benefice here, Holt and Wenners of Bramfield, Blyford and Thorrington, for the people and businesses, Beckles Road, Southwold Road, The Street, Holton Road, Bungie Road, Blyford Lane, Sparrowhawk Road in Holton, in Wenniston, Blackheath Road, Blythe Close, Back Lane, Oak Meadow Close, Church Lane, Colesview, Back Road, Coles Hill, Colescroft, Blyford Lane, Hammonds Walk, and in Bramfield, Church Farm Road, Bridge Street, The Hill, Pittman's Grove, Edwards Lane, Low Road, Halesworth Road, Walpole Road, Thorrington Road, Wenniston Road, in Blyford, South Old Road, Blyford Lane, Kings Lane, Thorrington, Priory Lane, The Street, Fox Lane, Low Road, Fairfields, The Wash, Brussels, Green, Wesselton Road, Willow, Marsh Lane, and Devils Lane. Pray for the people who live in those places, that uh, their faith will be increased, boosted by their experiences of life, whether good or bad. We pray where things are going well, that they might be generous to those around them. Where things are going less well, may those around them be generous towards them. We pray for businesses based in or serving those addresses, that uh, they will be blessed, protected, provided for, that they will make the right decisions uh, 
amongst the changes and chances of this fleeting world. They may continue to contribute to the local economy by providing goods, jobs and services. We pray for the struggling. Graham and Anne, Sarah, Maggie, Margaret, Anthony, Ron and Jean, Anna, John, Liz, Olive, Barbara, Mike, Nick, Lillian, David, Beryl, Di, Dennis, Kay, Valerie, Peter, Betty and Martin. We thank you for your grace and favour. We thank you for your presence and we pray that those will all be experienced by thee to whom we pray. And we ask that you bless those who walk with these, that they too will know your presence, your direction, your wisdom, your timing, will have your grace, your mercy, your skills to say and be, do the right thing at the right time. Finally, we thank you for all that's good in the lives of Arnold, Rowley, Harold, Jennifer, Lyra, Basil, Muriel, June, Malcolm, Mary, Dorothy, Rodney, Tony, Paddy, Karen, Pearl, Don, Joan, Kathy, John, Doreen, We pray for those whom we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who have served you faithfully here, those who died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those who have taken their own lives. And so we are reminded to remember truly those who died on all sides in our Reformation era in this country. We thank you for those who had the integrity to stand for what they believed in, even if it led to death. We pray that we will learn from them and learn to open our memories, open our history and remember the excluded and bear that in mind as we work towards ecumenism. May they pray for us. Rest and grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn, that you will be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You shall see a man in Yana Kamala and was an Yerk when she was at Monoholo Cosientis. A prino Yan Esim has an Eric Bahadas Asha San Alabari Imahan or Coma. And train you was near Fisim at the Walias de Missy for Masuja had near but Aliana Fatin. And Tamana had near us and follow Mahas or Shikanima at Yakas Bahadan or Slosh and seem at Magdalene the Asmahadash. And Tamana and Yalam as a forum, Tishi a hik. Pan Alinim or Tony Nimi. Nilu Kasan Yerma Fat Nations <laughs> Amahoric, Shalas at Mashfast, Talan Yaran, as in Pan Yorkos and Yerim. I will ye and Tim and Guru Casabas for Mahas at Maniat, Tanakadia Steve from that next to Sanet Vani E. Nilu Yasan Yerma for the Yanraft, Amavahas or Kanamat, Tamaratia Sifirama, Nuros of the Malavalos and Sanet Karan the Mosolosta. Merciful God, who, when your ravaged, sorry, when your church on earth was torn apart by the ravages of sin, raised up men and women in this land who witnessed to their faith with courage and constancy. Give to your church that peace which is your will, and grant that those who have been divided on earth may be reconciled in heaven and share together in the vision of your glory. Amen. <clears throat> Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God bless those of you joining us on Facebook and on YouTube.